Hello world, welcome to the policy today on Vantage TV. We'll be discussing on our political issues, you know, around the world and we'll be focusing on our country, Nigeria. My name is Darlington Obidike and I have with me here, Mr. Samuel. Thank you very much, um, Darlington. It's, it's great to be here. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, my name is Samuel Ehiwe. Um, I'm a legal practitioner practicing here in Lagos State, um, Nigeria. Um, I'm also a social commentator. Uh, I'm a director at the Young Professionals for PYO, a group that is um, poised towards ensuring policy development and good governance in Nigeria. Um, I'm also um, the president of the SK Africa Foundation, uh, which is a group aimed at ensuring that young Nigerians get quality um, education. We've, we've been on this issue of um, trying to ensure Nigeria as a country get it right in the in the polity in the in the polity in the polity of nations, right? So um, I'm very grateful um, being here to talk on the key turning issues um, in Nigerian politics. Okay, all right. Um, looking at the pulse of the nation now, like um, looking at the pre, I mean, election year. Um, looking at the All Progressive Congress, the Democratic, um, I mean, the party that's the PDP. We've had a lot, a lot of people, I mean, coming out declaring and don't run for president. I mean, the APC, I think we'll have about six of them. We'll have the Umay, we'll have Antinobu, we'll have, um, um, what's his name? Um, Yahaya Bello. Bello and David Umay. Yeah. We'll have Atika Bubaka, I mean, Saraki, um, uh, what's his name? Pito B, yeah. and, you know, the rest of them. Vice President of the Emotion Banjo declared. So, what's your take, I mean, on, about this declaration? Thank you very much. You see, I, I like the word you used, the long awaited declaration. So, so when you use such a word, it, it tells you how the people feel. The people have been anticipating that declaration. The people have been waiting for that declaration. And when people anticipate a declaration, it simply means the people want that particular person to govern them. This is one of the best things that has happened to Nigeria. And PYO, Professor Yemi Oshibanjo, becoming president eventually, for me, would be one of the best gifts Nigeria would have. The declaration came at the right time. You know, he's a serving uh, poli political office holder, and others were declaring, but himself decided to focus on governance because that's what he has been called to do. So he had to delay the, the, the declaration. So for me, this is, the act this is actually the right time. Nigerians have been calling, oh, you see, in fact, we have so many groups calling for the vice president to run because they so believe in him. They believe he has the capacity from his antecedents and from the things he's done before. And now he has come out to throw his weight, throw, throw in um, his cap, say, you know what? I have what it takes. People are calling on me. Let me give it a try. Okay. Um, okay. Do you, do you think uh, the vice president took a bold step? Like what you said now, um, he, 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 I mean, he waited. It took a long time. You know, I see people seen on social media, on you know, the TV, radio, and everywhere. I mean, talking about the vice president. I mean, waiting for get approval from the vice. I mean, from the president. I mean, we're still getting approval from. I mean, from the president and some cabals. And you know, do you think? I mean, he took a bold step, or he has gotten that approval from the vice. I mean, from the president. That's been the moment of to run. So, what do you think? Okay. So, you see, you see, maybe we shouldn't use the word approval in the strict yeah. sense of it. We should be saying consultations. Because generally in politics, before you declare for such an office, you have to consult the relevant bodies, relevant individuals. You can't, you can't wait off the fact that there are people in the party that you must speak to first before you um, decide to vie for an office. It's, it's, called, it's called party structure. So there are some persons you wouldn't want them to hear about your declaration or your intention in the media. So you first have to go down there, consult with them, talk to them, oh, this is what I intend to do. This is what I intend to bring to the table. This is how I intend to serve Nigeria. I intend to run for this office. And he's been doing that as, a, as an astute politician. Every politician knows. These are, these are basic things uh, politicians um, know of. Anybody who just comes up to say, you know what, I want to be president, without first talking to relevant stakeholders in the party, is not serious. So as an astute party man, as an astute politician, he, had to, he took his time, went to all the geopolitical zones, went to all the local governments in Nigeria, consulted the relevant stakeholders, spoke with the president, and his political associates, his family members. And of course, after getting them to buy into his idea, he had to declare openly to Nigerians at large. And don't forget, Nigerians have been calling on him. We need you. We need you. Now he said, OK, you know what? You need me. 
here I am. Send me. Okay. Do you understand? Okay. All right, so I like that word you used, and you talked about political structure. So do you think, um, uh, I've been seeing some social media everywhere, I mean, do you think the VP uh, has this political structure, hmm. has this political base, you know, uh, serving as uh, at the general, you know, uh, in the uh, addition of Ashiwaju, I mean, as this, I think, for eight years, and what do you think, I mean, do you think the VP has uh, a political structure, that political base, like, for example, uh, uh, Amici, that's the Minister of Transportation, declared on, on Saturday, and a lot of people were like, ah, okay, this guy has this structure, he was, um, he was um, what was it called, he was uh, the councillor from council of the local government chairman, to the Speaker, House of Assembly, then to the Governor, governor of River State, now, is contested for President, that's, I mean, talking about political structure, that's mm -hmm. what we see as political structure. Do you think the VP, you know, sitting as, I mean, served as a commissioner for Lagos State, and President now he's the, I mean, the vice president for seven years, so what do you think? So you see, when we talk about structure, it, it doesn't just have to be you starting from the very bottom to say, you know, you were once a councillor, um, local government. There are some persons who started as House of Assembly members. There are some who started right from House of Rep. But there are some, the first shot at politics was at the Senate, you know. Um, and there are some, the first shot at politics was as governors, you know. Oshi Banjo did not just start as a commissioner. He has a track record, and that track record is one riddled with excellence. You know, we have people who started for a long time ago, and when you start counting what they did or the years they served, you see controversies trailing them. And the controversies are not controversies that tilt in the favor of the people. They are controversies of corrupt practices. As a very young man, he served as the special advisor to the former, the late, um, God rest his soul, the late um, Attorney General of the Federation. Oh. And when you check that out, he did excellently well. And because of his excellence, excellent performance, he was called to serve in Lagos State. And he served two terms. After that, they saw him fit to be the vice president. And he is, he's serving, he's almost gonna, he's gonna wrap up his um, second term. He's done a lot. And through this period, he's built a structure, a political structure of people who have high integrity. And that's basically what we need in Nigeria right now. We need people who have integrity, people who are passionate about the Nigerian project. So that's the structure he has built around himself. You know, and, and, and again, he has core supporters. If you go to the north, there are people who sing the praise of, of um, Oshi Banjo. And you know, we have political psychophants, but his own support base are not psychophants. They are those who have come to believe in his policies, in his person, because they know he has something to deliver. And how did they know he has something to deliver? Because he has actually delivered. When the opportunity was there before him, he delivered. So talking about structure and talking about service, he has been there from the days of yore. And I believe personally, and I believe Nigerians too believe, and the booze that came around his declaration will show you that Nigerians with their PVC were already deciding to throw it away because there was no option, no candidate to vote for. They wouldn't want to waste their vote. But now the VP has declared, everybody is now dusting their PVC. We have a candidate. We have a candidate. The election day will tell, and you see what I'm talking about. Okay, looking at Prof's uh, speech today, the de declaration, and looking at what people said on social media as, as a vice president, I mean, uh, at the position of, of, of a vice president, you know, I, I saw you know, um, uh, tweets like, you were the, I mean, you were the vice president for eight years, what you are the vice president. He's still okay, the vice president, yes. You are, I mean, you are the vice president for eight years, and what have you done? I mean, so many things happened in the country. You've not done anything, you've not. So I, and I saw some people tweeting too. Uh, at least the, 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 the vice president has bro. He has, to an extent, he, has, he knows what to do and what, what not to do. So can you talk about, can you talk about, I mean. Okay, you see, when you go to social media, I'm also a very techie person, just like the vice president. Okay. And as we all say, technology, is a new oil, data is new oil. The, the VP is a very technologically savvy person. I am a very technologically savvy person too. And when you go on Twitter, for example, the VP is trending. It, what, what it means to trend on Twitter particularly is that you are the one the whole country is talking about at that particular point in time. People are saying, as vice president for seven and a half years or seven years and it's still running, what have you done? Those who say that are those who are either oblivious of what he has done, either intentionally oblivious, or they just want to be scarce with, this, with, with, with the truth. I can read to, read to you 
a hundred and one things that the VP has done, both as vice president and as acting president. Number one, when he was acting president, he set up what we call Pebec, and he created a system that made it very easy to do business. And because of that, Nigeria as an economy went up in the ease, in the ranking, the World Bank ranking of the ease of, the, of, of doing business. That was a development every Nigerian who decides to be fair, aside those who decide to be intentionally blind to the truth, that's something every Nigerian saw. That's one. Two, when he was acting president, he worked assiduously to bring peace to the Niger Delta. Nigeria gets close to 90% or over 90% of its revenue from oil. At that time, there was crisis around there, and people said, the, the, the militants said, oh, you know what, we want to bomb the pipelines. And that was going to affect the economy. He went there himself and solved the problem. Today, do you still hear of Niger Delta militancy? That piece came courtesy of the vice president, someone who understands security. Thirdly, he has so much worked to help SMEs, MSMEs, medium and small scale enterprises. How did he do this? He curated and created a concept of um, the social welfare schemes, trader money, market money, farmer money, and all of that. And in doing that, unlike other politicians who sit in their office and send people on errands, he went there to deliver the dividends of democracy to the people. Go to the north. Before you come in, go to the north. When you get to the north, you will see the testimonies of the ordinary northerner. Governance is not, it's not just about the elites. Governance is about what the people at the grassroots feel. And if you go to the north, they will testify. They will testify about the impact of these policies of the vice president. So the VP, you know, the VP has done exceptionally well. In the issue of rule of law, he has, he has upheld the rule of law through his statements, through his intolerance for corruption. People who have been corrupt in the system, he has recommended them for sack and prosecution. And I don't want to be mentioning names because they are all there for us to see. So for those who say, um, um, and again, you, if you want to really look at what people are saying, people should be judging the VP and his performance based on his roles. What are the roles of a vice president? Has he performed in those roles? Has he performed? So if, for example, his role is to chair this, his role is to deliver this, his role is to ensure this happens, has he done that? That's a yastic. Has he done that? If he has done that, he has performed. And I believe he has so much more to give and to deliver if he becomes a substantive president. And that's why, for me personally, um, I think he's the, he's the right man for the job. Okay. Yeah. Uh, talking about his role as, as, as the VP, yeah. we should look at his achievement, I mean, his role as the VP. Yeah. Um, you know, I go to know about, um, let's say, our social investment program through Professor Jeremy Shibajo, you know, talking about, I mean, when the PDP were in government, we heard about, uh, what is it called? Mm -hmm. Shopee, mm -hmm. yeah, that was supposed to be the uh, social investment program, and we really didn't see that. But today, you're talking about um, uh, empower. Well, I mean, empower is everywhere. I mean, yeah. across the country. I mean, the country. Have, I mean, empower the homegrown school feeding program, the conditional cash transfer, and mm -hmm. you know, all of this social investment program. I mean, so what do you think? Although for me, like I said earlier, I got to know about more. I mean, I got interested about social investment program because I see it functioning. You know, you talk about other countries like. Um, what was it called? Indonesia, Malaysia. Yeah. I saw how social development program helped, uh, uh, what was it called? Help their country, I mean, their country grow. Mm. So, I mean, what do you have to say about, I, know, I, I, I mean, do you think the VP has done well, I mean, on that path? Okay, so, first of all, let me, let me make you understand that he, he, he birthed the idea. Of okay. course, I mean, with the, with, with, together with the president, you know? So they worked on it together. And just like the reference you made to um, Shopee, yeah, Shopee in the past administration, it was riddled with corruption. And there are people who were even taken to court because of that. So the invest, social investment program of the vice president has yielded so much result. And how do you know whether a, a program or a project yield, has yielded result? By reaching out to the beneficiaries. So what he did was that he took it at the expense of his life. You can even quote the president who was worried about his own safety. He was worried about the VP's safety. Are you sure it is safe for you to go into the hinterland. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Yes. Sorry, continue. Yeah. Sure. Uh, I mean, uh, okay. You know, uh, 2019 we had uh, 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 the market money, the farmers money, yeah. the traders money under this. Uh, I mean, this should be called Jeep, the government enterprise empowerment. Mm -hmm. That's the Jeep. So, 
do you think, uh, uh, because people were saying, I mean, I mean, it's vote buying. I mean, so what do you think? I mean, so those are all rhetorics. You see, when you are in the opposition, every opportunity you find, you use it to castigate the government. Once the beneficiaries were, hap were happy and I'm praising the government for what they were doing through the vice president, instead of the opposition party appreciating the government through the vice president for what they were doing, they were looking for loopholes, ways to condemn that particular policy. But the way to judge it is what, were, what was the common man feeling, what was his own appreciation of that particular project. They were happy. You know? And as we speak today, if you go to the north, there are lots of people who are now doing well in their businesses just by virtue of that soft loans that were given to them, cash loans, money is given to them to, to, you know, to grow and to uphold their business. And again, I was going to make a point you know, on the issue of um, the social investment scheme. Now we have a ministry. So it is no longer under the vice president. We have a ministry that, is, that has been set up, that has a minister, a minister that has been set up to handle this issue of children's money, social investment scheme. A great leader is one who is able to bring up an idea and turn it into an institution. Not one who builds an idea around himself. So the VP came up with this idea and built it into an institution. And the president saw how effective it is and took it and created a ministry. So when you look at that ministry of social welfare, you know, it is the product, the byproduct of the vice president. Because it was working, the president said this is becoming very big. The, pre the VP has so much to do. Let's leave this body away from him. He has already birthed it. He has nurtured it. Went through the gestation period. He gave birth to the idea. He nurtured it. After nurturing it, he winged the idea. After winning the idea, he took the idea. Mr. President, this is what we have done. People are happy. He said, you know what? Let's me turn it to a, a full-fledged ministry. And they've turned it to a full-fledged ministry with a minister, a permanent secretary, and, and members of staff. The idea of the vice president. That's a great leader. One who turns ideas into institutions, and he builds it. And that's what the vice president said. So contrary to what those, uh, wake, those people that are waking their tongues, contrary to what they have said, they said, the program was taken away from the vice president because they were corrupt practices. But that's not true. The VP curated the idea and worked on it and built it to a very solid level. And the president felt that it was good, so good enough for it to be a ministry to stand on its own. And then the ministry was created for it. So he has done well. Uh, looking at uh, on Twitter, looking at Ashwaju's people, I saw a lot of tweets. Uh, yeah, I think I mean, we can go online and check some of the tweets. And I mean, I see a whole lot of tweets. I mean, I should yeah. just be talking about uh, that's the VP uh, try, I mean, trying to be an ingrid and all of that. I mean, I should you make who you are today. Mm -hmm. And don't you think the VP is kind of betraying the I mean, I mean, betraying Ashwaju? What do you think about that? It's a democracy, everybody is free to run. If you think you have something to it's not about an individual, it's not an individual thing. You will be betraying the country if you have enough to offer the country and you decide not to come out because of an individual. And the president has, the VP has so much to offer and he has put himself out. So let the most, the, the most, um, the person that the people want, let him win. It's a democracy. You know, so, so anybody can run. Even you, you can decide to run for president. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, so so it's, a, it's a free, it's a democracy um, and uh, nobody is betraying anybody. The, the VP is someone that has so much integrity. And I can speak to you categorically that Ashiwaju and the VP, they are still very close friends. There's no war in the camp. You know, so it's just those on social media, majority of whom not even have PVCs. They are the ones causing problems for themselves. Yeah. So. yeah. Talking about the, uh, um, the level of uh, uh, insecurity in our country, yeah. um, okay, two weeks ago we had the uh, Kaduna Abuja real uh, attack. Oh, true, true. Yeah, very and, unfortunate. Uh, very unfortunate. Uh, we had this. Um, on trend, I mean, social media trend, on tweet about uh, these uh, surveillance equipment. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, all of that. So what do you have to say about this? Okay, so uh, first of all, my condolence goes to those who lost their lives, the family members of those who lost their lives during the very unfortunate um, um, incident. It was a national issue, really. So uh, what happened was, I mean, the minister commented, the minister of transportation, that so if surveillance equipment had been bought, if the proposal for the purchase and installation of surveillance equipment were, was approved, what happened wouldn't have happened, and the lives that were lost would not have been lost. So we had to, I am a lawyer, right? So uh, we, we, we look into facts. So, uh, and again, as published by newspapers, we later got to discover that the proposal was actually submitted to the FEC. The FEC is the Federal Reserve Council. And on that particular Wednesday, 
um, the FEC was chaired by the vice president. And that, that proposal was not approved. Now, the reasons around the non-approval of the proposal is something that is very key that Nigerians should understand. And this also speaks to the integrity of the vice president. So the, approval was, the proposal was submitted. The details of the equipment to be bought, the companies to be bought from, the unit price, the cumulative um, cost of all of those items that amounted to $3 billion was not clearly set out. That's one. Two, the company that was proposed to get the contract was a very young company with no history or track record of having done a contract of that magnitude or of that nature before. Um, annual, return, annual turnover of about 80 something million and wants to get a contract of about the 3 billion, about, about 3 billion. So those discrepancies and the issue of um, the, the maintenance, the training of staff and all of those things, they were not there. So some ministers raised issues about it and some other members of the uh, FEC raised issues about it. In summary, the vice president looked at it and says, you know what, maybe you have to go back and do some homework and then come back to the, to the council and they will be consider it. The ministry never came back. So this shows you that the, the VP, the vice president, um, is someone who is given to details. He doesn't just approve and spend national resources, national funds like that. He needs to look at it and be sure that this particular project is one that will benefit the people and, that, and one that won't um, go into private pockets. So he looked at it and said, you know what? Once all the details are set out, once we are sure that it's actually $3 billion that this project will cost, it can be approved. So what the, the role of the vice president there is one that shows you or tells you that it's one that, 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 that really cares about how your tax, your, the money you pay as tax, as, as tax, the money we get as um, revenue from, from oil, how that money is spent. Someone who, who wants to be sure that there's no scintilla of corruption. That there's no element of abuse of power. He looks at it line by line. He doesn't just take a document and sign it off because he knows that the resources of the people is there. Someone who is not corrupt, someone who has integrity, someone who cares about the people. And that played out in, the, and, and you see, that wasn't even brought out to the, to, the, to the public space. If not for this incident that happened, we wouldn't have known that the VP is one who looks into issues critically to avoid corrupt practices. My question to everyone is, isn't that the kind of person we want? Today we complain about corruption, previous admission of corruption, this and that. Even those who walk around, around the, the hands of some, some people are corrupt. But the VP at the helm of affairs, we are now sure that he is someone who cannot just take a paper and sign and allow corrupt practices to happen. So if he, if he takes charge as a vice president, he's going to follow the rules. He's going to be, he's going to be um, a due process president. He's going to be someone who is very cerebral, someone who is very strong, strong enough to say no. Even if a proposal or a project is coming from a family member, a close friend, a powerful minister, he can say, this thing won't benefit the people. He's going to be at the loss of the people. And he will say no. That kind of strong, non-jellyfish leader is the person we want. And we have seen it in the vice president. And this again explains to you why people were calling for him to, to, to run. You know? So I, I believe that that incident alone um, tells you the kind of person the vice president is, a strong leader who can put his feet on the ground and take decisions that will benefit Nigerians. Well, finally, I mean, condolence to all those who lost their lives and those who are still in, in, um, in captivity. I believe the, the military they are working um, day and night to, to get them out, and I, I, want to be, I want to hope that they will come out um, safely, in safe hands. Okay, right now, uh, uh, on social media, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, I mean, and so many blogs, I mean, the declaration is buzzing everywhere yeah. and, you know, okay, so, I mean, this declaration, what do you think, I mean, what's the future, I mean, of this declaration, I mean, Kupor coming out, that the president coming out to declare, you know, telling Nigeria his, 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 his intentions and, you know, what he has to offer and all of that, I mean, yeah. where's the country go, what do you think, where do you see Nigeria, I mean, few uh, uh, years from now, yeah. all of that. Let me start by saying the future is now. The future just began with this declaration. Now, uh, we, we've been seeing some companies leaving Nigeria because they say that the environment is not economically friendly. See, international companies leaving, Twitter wants to set up a headquarters. They say instead of coming to Nigeria, they want to go as well. But we shock you to understand that recently, Doron Avni, a director 
at Google, after a meeting, a strategic meeting with the vice president, said because of the vice president, Professor Yami Oshibanjo, Google will be making a huge investment in Nigeria. Oh, wow. A huge investment in Nigeria. Now, that tells you that, you see, econ the economy is all about perception. So the economy grows and crumbles. It grows and shrinks based on the perception around. Forex grows and shrinks based on fears, perceptions. So the foreign investors have this very clear, positive perception about the vice president. And it is not just born from fiction. It is born from the facts and the figures, the things they've seen him do, the interactions they've had with him. He's a very techy person. We don't need a president who can't operate WhatsApp. We don't need a president who knows nothing about, about, um, about technology. Technology is the future. And the vice president, we've seen him explore technology to carry out most of the policies under his portfolio. So looking at that, Koku said, you know what? We are coming to Nigeria. When asked why, they said because of the vice president. So when he becomes a president, it becomes very clear to you that mo many companies around Silicon Valley may start bringing investments into Nigeria. The person of the vice president. He's tech friendly, he's youth friendly, he's, he's, his policies as, as an acting president was, was, was investment friendly. We saw FDIs, foreign directors, even F FOIs. Um, FPIs, foreign portfolio investment, foreign they were all coming to Nigeria because the economy at that time became very friendly. The cost of registration of business at the CAC, he slashed it because he wanted people to do business, made it very easy. So this tells you that um, going forward and hopefully when the president, I'm not saying if, when the vice president becomes president, um, it tells you that Nigeria is going to be all good for it. We're going to see people, this issue of jackpot, say you want to, Nigerian youth wants to jackpot. We see people, they will pull stop jackpotting. People from the UK will start jackpotting to Nigeria. They want to come and school in Nigeria because there's a light at the helm of affairs. There's light at the helm of affairs. People from the US want to be applying. You know, we'll be telling, I, I, I see a future where we will give them two years post study, post, post study, two years to work. If after two years you can't get a job, we'll send them back to, to the US. Or like, like what they do to us now, you go to the UK, after working there, they say after two years, you come back, give you two years extra to work. So to, to get to a situation under the PYO presidency, where people in the US, people in the UK will come to Nigeria to study, apply to Unilag, want to come and do masters in Unilag. And after that, Unilag will send them back to their country to go and do their country. We hope that happens under the PYO presidency. Uh, you know, I, I, I like that chapter because I myself, too, I, I mean, I'm... You want to jackpot too? No, I'm not that. I mean, okay. Good. Jack back to Nigeria. For fantastic. That's, that's fantastic. fantastic. Because, I, mean, fantastic. I believe in uh, 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 like our country to grow. Because I myself, I don't have money to jack to other countries. Aha. So I prove a better Nigeria. Yes. So that's, that's what I mean. So, all right, guys. Thank you for joining us today on the Polity Today on Fantage TV. See you guys next time. Cheers. <laughs>